Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're going to continue looking at the It's a Trap API. Specifically, we'll see how to set up special effects and how to call other API scripts to use as part of your traps. And note that because we're using the API, you will need a pro account in order to do this. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. So last time around, we looked at actually setting up the traps and having them automatically trigger and do damage. But now let's take that to the next level. Let's say that when our trap goes off, we want there to be a burst of blood or a gout of flame or some other special effect. We can do that. Let's set one of those up. Okay, so quick refresher on special effects in Roll20. If you come down here to the lightning bolt icon on the toolbar and click it, you'll see you've got this little FX toolbar that appears. Beam, Acid, these two drop downs. This one shows you the type of the effect that you're gonna get. This one gives you the color of that effect. So Beam Acid is going to give you this green beam, right? And then you can change the color if you want it to look like fire. There we go. If we wanna change it to look like a burst, then we get that effect. So that's the, the syntax that we're gonna be working with here. You have your type and your color. Okay, so now how do we apply that to a trap? Well, we're gonna build on the trap that we set up in the last video, that spike pit, which is currently on my GM layer. So I'm going to press the K key on the keyboard because I have advanced shortcuts enabled. That'll jump me onto the GM layer and I'm gonna highlight the trap. Then we'll click the trap maker macro that was installed by the It's a Trap API script and we get our wizard. Okay, so we're gonna go right down here to the activation properties in the wizard and we're gonna click special effects. And the input value here is the name of the special effect. And for this, what we're gonna do is that same syntax, the type and the color. So I wanna do a burst and then you put in a dash and then the color, and I want it to be blood, because I figure that works well, you've just fallen on a big spike pit, there's gonna be blood coming out, right? So we're gonna get a burst of blood when this trap triggers. Click Submit. Now we're gonna skip over the next two settings for right now. I just wanna show you what it looks like when this trap triggers. So we're gonna skip FX offset, and we're gonna skip the direction. We're just gonna click Submit here. Then I'm gonna go back to the token layer by pressing O on the keyboard, and I'm gonna move my rogue into the traps area and her passive perception is not high enough to detect this trap so she's going to get caught by the trap there she goes and you see that burst of blood comes out as she falls into the trap so that is working properly okay cool so now let's reset the trap i'm just going to move my rogue out of there i'm going to move the trap back to the gm layer to reset it so now let's talk about those other two properties. So again, I'm going to select the trap, run the trap maker macro, and I'm gonna run special effects again. All right, we're gonna put burst blood in. I wanna keep that the same. And now the offset. So the offset allows you to cause the special effect to occur in a location away from the trap itself. So the burst of blood that we just fired comes from the center of the trap and goes outward. But let's say we're doing some kind of a different effect. Maybe somebody steps on a pressure plate and we want the special effect to appear behind the trap or in front of the trap or, or something else. Well, that's what the offset allows you to do. It allows you to cause the special effect to appear a certain number of squares away from the trap itself. And the format for this is X comma Y. X is the horizontal axis, Y is the vertical axis, and so it's how many squares up and away from our trap do we want this to trigger. So let's say I want that burst of blood to occur over here. So that is one, two, three squares to the left of my trap. So the way I'm gonna specify that is a square bracket, minus three on the X, because I am three to the left of the original location, comma zero, because I'm not changing the up and down of where the effect is going to fire. It's gonna be at the same Y location. And then we put a closing square bracket. And the brackets are important. If you do this without the brackets, it won't work. So we're going to 
have this be negative three comma zero. That will make the effect fire three squares to the left. We'll submit. I'm not gonna talk about the direction yet. We'll do that next. So we're just gonna leave this one blank. Okay, so now our trap has been updated. Let's go back to the token layer. We're gonna move our rogue through here again. She's gonna hit the trap. And you can see now the burst of blood is happening three squares to the left of the trap itself. Okay, so I've reset the trap. And now let's talk about that direction parameter that we were just looking at. I'm gonna be on the GM layer. I'm gonna click on my trap again, trap maker. And we're gonna click on special effects one more time. This time around though, instead of a burst of blood, I want something that's a little easier to demonstrate direction with. So I'm going to put in a beam of fire. Submit. Again, I want this to have an offset. It's gonna be much more apparent when we're changing direction with an offset. So again, I'll do just like we did before, negative three comma zero. Again, enclose those in square brackets. And now direction. Okay, if we leave this blank, the beam of fire is going to point at whatever token set the trap off. So just to illustrate that, we're gonna leave this blank again. We're gonna go back to the object layer. I'm going to have the rogue trigger the trap. And you can see the beam of fire points directly at her. So that's us not changing anything. All right, we'll reset the trap real fast. Okay. And now if I go back into the wizard, beam fire, offset minus three comma zero, submit. So now this FX direction is going to allow us to aim that beam somewhere else. And the easiest way to think about this is to imagine a compass, north, south, east, and west. If you want the beam to point north, you set y to minus 1 here. If you want the beam to point south, you're going to use y positive 1. And then if you want it to point east, you use x1. And if you want it to point west, you use x minus 1. And then combinations of those two coordinates in order to get pointing, say, northwest or southeast. So if I want this beam to point, say, straight up, just go straight north, then what I'm going to say is x is going to be 0 because I'm not modifying the x value. And then it'll be minus one for y. And that will cause this beam to point straight up. Okay, so we've made that change. Let's have our rogue trigger this trap again. All right, she walks over it, it fires off, and you see the beam is pointing straight up. So there's our true north. Okay, I've reset the trap. I'm gonna blitz through the screens again here to get back to that directional section. And now let's say I want the beam to point northwest. So again, that's going to be negative 1x to go west and negative 1y to go north. And again, enclose those in square brackets. Click Submit. We'll have my rogue trigger the trap one last time. And there we go. Now we see the beam pointing northwest. So that's how you can set up the special effect, how you can control the type of special effect and where it occurs and how you can point where you want it to aim. So that's special effects, but what if there's some other API script that you wanna call as part of your trap? Well, we can do that too. Let's have a look. Now, the first thing you gotta think about is, okay, well, what script are we calling and what are we going to do? So I want my rogue to fall into the pit trap, have some blood, and maybe there's like a, a whirling blades down there too. I want her token to start spinning around like she's in a blender. Okay, well, we can do that with a script from the Aaron, who else, called spin tokens. So you need to, of course, make sure you've installed whatever script you want to call from It's a Trap, like I've done here. And then we need to actually make the call to that script. Now, the syntax for this would normally just be highlighting the token that you want to spin and then typing in this command. So exclamation point spin dash start, and then the number of seconds it should take for the token to make one complete rotation. So I've got 60 here, which means this will take 60 seconds to make a full rotation. Think of it like a second hand on a watch. Okay. Normally this would work just fine, but we aren't going to have the token selected when she hits the trap. The it's a trap script isn't going to have that selected property available. So what we need to do is add this as well, this IDs victim ID. 
and victim ID is a special keyword that It's a Trap provides that says whatever token hit the trap, we're going to apply this particular operation to. All right, so I'm just going to take this whole thing, copy it. Okay, so I press Control C. Let's go back to the GM layer. We're going to highlight our trap again. We're going to launch the wizard. I'm going to go into the API command section here. And I'm going to paste in my command. And this is part of the reason why I like doing stuff in Notepad outside of Roll20 because you can't see the whole line here. So I'm just going to paste that in, click Submit. Okay, let's have our rogue trigger this again. She walks up, she hits the trap, and she gets pulled in. And now you see her token is spinning. And I could make this go faster if I wanted to, just increase that 60 value to another number. But now she is spinning around. And... Just incidentally, if you do want to stop that spinning, the command for that is just exclamation point spin dash stop, and then she will stop spinning and we can bring her back and uh, put her up to the normal point again. Now, depending on the API script you want to use, there may be additional escape parameters that you need to provide. So go to the It's a Trap help page, like where I am right now, and you can see that they give you some additional information about the victim ID keyword. There's also a trap ID keyword that represents the traps token. For some commands, you may need to escape certain characters by prefixing them with a backslash. So they give up an example with power cards here. It's up to you. I just want to make you aware that there may be some additional escaping that needs to happen in order for the API call to work properly. Now, in addition to that, depending on what other scripts you have installed, there is some built-in support from It's a Trap for areas of effect, Kaboom, and token mod. So I've done a video on Kaboom previously. I'll pop a card to that one. But for token mod, because I always have token mod installed, and I think everybody should always have token mod installed because it's like one of the most helpful scripts ever, uh, we can put that in as well. So let's say that when our rogue hits this trap, not only is she going to have that burst of blood and she's going to start spinning around at the bottom like you know she's in a Cuisinart, maybe there's also like little bits of metal flying around as the blades whirl and you know she's going to go temporarily blind because that stuff's going to get in your eyes. Well, we can cause that blindness effect with token mod. So let's go ahead. We're going to come in here one more time. So I've just reset the trap. We're going to run the wizard again. This time around, I'm going to go to the token mod script. And the token mod command to cause a token to go blind, that is to lose its vision, would look like this. So this is what the command would look like for that normally with token mod. You know, exclamation point token mod, the IDs, again, that's going to be the victim ID. And then we're setting the bright vision property of the token to off, meaning we're turning off their sight. But because the It's a Trap API has special support for token mod, we can actually leave this piece off. So the only thing we need to type in is this section right here. And the It's a Trap API is going to be smart enough to know, oh, this command is in with token mod, so I'm going to run token mod with that. So I'm putting that in there. I've clicked submit. Okay, let's run our rogue through one more time. We move her in, she hits the trap, she's spinning, and if I double click on her, her vision has been set to off. So there you have it, special effects and calling other API scripts from within a trap. And I think what you'll find is this will help make your game much more immersive and make your traps all the more sophisticated and fun for your players. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.